In this video, I'm going to show you how to build estimates and projections for Google Ads campaigns, and I'm going to show you how to do it using a really amazing tool that we created internally here at Solutions 8 that I'm just going to give away to you for free because, well, I want you to like me because I want to be YouTube famous. Um, so hopefully you find this to be valuable. Uh, if you want to download the tool uh, that I'm about to reference, you go to our website, soul8.com forward slash estimates, S-O-L, the number 8.com forward slash estimates. Uh, by the way, my name is Kasim. I'm the founder and CEO of Solutions 8. We're one of the greatest Google Ads management uh, agencies on the planet. And um, I, I like talking about Google Ads stuff. So that's what I'm going to do here today. So um, first, let me give you the use case. Uh, the estimates and projections, this is meant to help you understand whether or not Google Ads can be viable for you in the first place. So can this work or not? And, and uh, if so, to what degree? Um, and we're going to go over two specific use cases. There's lead generation and e-commerce. Lead generation means you're, you're trying to get the phone to ring. Um, so, you know, this is uh, doctors, lawyers, uh, dentists, agencies, professional services. Um, E-commerce means you're trying to sell something. So this is every, everything from you know, um, uh, selling online specialty products to even SaaS companies really should probably consider themselves e-commerce, um, at least for the, the purposes of this particular exercise. So we'll start with lead gen first and then we'll segue over to e-commerce. Um, you'll notice that some of this information is pre-populated. Um, this is formulaic. So you don't want to touch anything that's in gray. Um, the stuff in white, uh, you can play with if you want to. Um, but it's really the stuff that's highlighted in yellow that's going to be most important. But let's talk about the stuff in white. Um, first, monthly impressions. I'm getting this data from Google Keyword Planner. So if I wanted to go build um, uh, estimates and projections for a new client or for a campaign that I was running, I would go look at how much available traffic uh, exists. So let's just say there's half a million um, average monthly impressions. Uh, the very next thing we need to calculate is our expected click-through rate. Now, in industry standard is uh, half a percent to 2%. If you know what you're doing, you're going to be able to achieve 2%, I think, with relative, relative degree um, of, of efficacy. Uh, you might have a much higher click-through rate. You know, I mean, depending on your industry, uh, emergency plumber is the, the easiest one to think of. They're probably going to have pretty, pretty high click-through rates. Um, so if you have a historical data point to tell you that you're going to have a higher CTR, then you may. Um, I don't know if I'd rely on that. It also isn't going to really impact your data much because um, your CTR in this particular instance isn't going to uh, impact the amount of um, what your leads cost. It's just going to impact the amount of traffic that's available to you. So let's assume it's 2% for now. Average CPC, um, uh, again, this comes from Keyword Planner. Google Keyword Planner is going to give you the uh, uh, low end and high end for a top of page bid. I like to average those two together. Uh, $5 per click is, you know, honestly kind of inexpensive for high commercial intent. Um, so let's assume that our average CPC is $10 um, just to, you know, get a sense as to what a more competitive ecosystem might look like. Now, what's going to happen is it will tell me the uh, projected available traffic um, and the maximum ad budget based off of what's going on here. So I'm going to come in here and say, OK, you know what? What if I wanted to spend? Uh, let's just make our math easy. I want to spend $5,000 a month. Um, now, what the calculator needs to know is two things. First, the initial order value, and second, the lifetime customer value. If you're running a, a lead generation play, you need to be really comfortable with the fact and the idea that you might not be making all of your money off of the customer's initial order. Now, it depends on what you're doing. If you're um, you know, a divorce attorney, uh, there's, you're not going to have much in the way of uh, retention and ascension, I imagine. And obviously, there's things like the initial consult, the consults, and then full engagement. But what I mean is that's not necessarily a recurring revenue service. Um, so it depends on, on the business that you're running. But I'll use my business just as an example. So our initial order value, we charge $1,500 um, for a client. But a client you know, who sticks around with us uh, might be worth 10000 bucks. Now, realize that I'm giving you gross revenue numbers. What you might want to do is plug in your net here so that you can actually see um, your, your ROI in a way that gives you the opportunity to determine profitability. Um, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. So if I'm running off of 20% uh, margins, I'm actually making $300 um, for a client and uh, $2,000 lifetime revenue. Um, so n now that I have these numbers in place, let's figure out our conversions. Uh, projection conversions here means how many people who click through through the ads are actually going to be a lead. Now, if you have a really high conversion rate, uh, an exceptionally high conversion rate is like 20%. We have campaigns that are higher. I have some campaigns that function at 30% conversions. Um, our real estate investment campaign for a while, you know, on certain facets had 40% conversions because uh, it was so tight. But 10% um, is high. 
So I'm going to assume I, I've got a really high converting website. So 20% actually isn't that bad, but let's do 10% just for the sake of the argument here. And then your projected close rate. So once you get a lead, uh, how many of them are actually going to close? Uh, and this is going to really depend on things like, you know, how tight are your keywords? Uh, how focused are you getting? How expansive is your search? Um, so, you know, for all intents and purposes here, let's assume that I have a, I don't know what, 25% close rate. Um, now, oh gosh, this is really good. So a couple of things. Number one is my calculator allows you to include uh, an agency fee. So our fee is 1500 bucks plus 10%. So bam, um, the fee is included. If you want to exclude the fee, let's say you're running this yourself or uh, you have a cheaper agency, which means they suck. Um, you can change their fee if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave my fee in there because that's assumed that I'm paying me to do it. So you can see the agency fee, um, the total uh, monthly fee um, after the base plus percentage, and then your total expenses. So this is fee plus your spend. And uh, you, we have two numbers here. Our return on investment monthly is 53%. That's an abysmal number. You don't want to run a business that has a 53% ROI. However, our return on investment lifetime value of a customer is 357%. Uh, anything over a 300% ROI, I think is actually usually pretty good. Um, so as long as I know my retention number, my lifetime value of, the, uh, of a customer number is solid. And I, I made this up. Ours is actually, you know, our, our retention exceeds 16 months. So um, we've got really solid numbers. But um, as long as you know that your lifetime value number is solid, then this to me is a very viable campaign. And you can play around with this. You know, I mean, you might have, um, you know, let's say I want to spend a lot more, but I make a lot less. And my cost per click is a lot lower. You know, the, the, the average CPC in the, uh, across all Google keywords is $2. So if you have a $2 CPC um, and all other numbers remain the same, then you'll see that the ROI here is really significant. Um, and, you know, you might say, hey, well, my, my CPC is lower, but I make far less per client lifetime value. Um, or initial order value or whatever it is. So this lets you kind of uh, beat up the business model. And it also gives you an opportunity to see where you might need to be able to, you know, make some improvements. You know, you could say, hey, gosh, if we just improved our conversion rate or just improved our close rate, um, then we're going to see some improvements in terms of the campaign efficacy. So hopefully you can kind of see how this is really helpful on the front end. Obviously, none of these numbers are written in stone. Uh, Google Keyword Planner's data is off by 30% in either direction. So there's a 60% window of variance that you're working with. Um, that said, it, 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 I believe, is getting better. And if you're averaging um, numbers out on keywords that you find to be very relevant, then I think you're dealing with pretty solid data. And you, you know, at least have a predictive indicator of whether or not your campaign is going to work for you. So that's the lead generation tab. Let's jump over to the e-commerce tab, shall we? Uh, e-commerce means we're selling something online. You'll notice that with e-commerce, uh, there's no second phase to the conversion. You know, with lead generation, you have to get somebody to contact you, and then you have to get them to pay you money. With e-commerce, what's nice is uh, they go on, and then either they buy or they don't. And I guess that's, you know, that's good or bad, depending on how you look at it. But um, same story here. Let's do monthly impressions. Let's say that I'm selling cell phone cases, because that's what everybody wants to do nowadays for whatever reason. You wouldn't believe how many leads I get from people that have affiliate stores selling cell phone cases. It's absurd. But there's you know easily a million um, uh, in the way of traffic there. Uh, Click-through rate is probably going to be low because it's a, a product that you know is saturated. Uh, average cost per click, I have no clue. Let's say it's $3.50. Um, could be low, could be high. You know, those saturated markets, it's always hard to tell. So uh, let's sell my cell phone case campaign. I want to spend 10,000 bucks because I'm a big baller. Uh, my average initial order, you know, everybody usually purchases one cell phone case from me for $30. I've got 50% margin, so I make $15 on that. Um, but I have noticed that because I've got, you know, Clavio installed and Shopify, I'm able to bring them back around and I upsell them on a screen protector. Um, you know, 50% of people buy a screen protector and then uh, uh, another 50% of people will come back and buy another accessory from me. So let's just say that my lifetime value of a customer is $45. Um, and then my closing ratio is amazing because I've got a really amazing type of cell phone case that nobody else has and it does stuff that nobody else does. So we'll say I've got a 15% closing ratio. Um, now let's take a look at our numbers here. We have got uh, the monthly fee for the agency. So here's your total monthly fee, total expenses, total expenses, and uh, your return on ad spend. Now remember, these numbers are based off of my net profit. 
Okay, so a lot of people will say things like, oh, I need a 300% ROAS. Well, you need a 300% ROAS off of your gross revenue number. What I just did here is I said, if I make $15 net after all expenses, um, then this actually, this number works. Now it's not sexy. There's nothing about this that excites me, but this is a functional number. Anything over 100% means you're making your money back and then some uh, based off of your net profit again. Um, so just be really cognizant of that fact because you know oftentimes when you're dealing with e-commerce companies and they mention their ROAS requirements, they're doing it off of their gross and then building their, um, their margins into that discussion. And generally speaking, most e-commerce uh, organizations that we've been a part of need at least 300% ROAS. Um, but this being off of your net, you're making some money. But again, it's not not super attractive at all. I don't think I'd run a cell phone, cell phone case campaign. Um, let's say that you're not selling cell phone cases. Let's say that you're selling, I'll think of one of our clients actually, um, medical device equipment. We've got a client that sells um, accessories to uh, medical devices. Um, so, you know, if, you're, if your light bulb run, runs out on specific types of medical devices, you can't just go to Home Depot and get that light bulb. It's, it's a special type of light bulb. Um, and his average order value, I don't know exactly, but let's assume that it's, uh, his cost per click is gonna be a little bit higher. Um, five is fair, but his average order value is uh, much better. It's under a hundred bucks. Let's say it's $85. And then his lifetime customer value is really high because he's got an amazing retention and ascension campaign. So as soon as somebody buys from them, they get dropped in their email database. Um, he profiles them using uh, interest-based segmentation in his emails, and then he does a really good job at following up. So let's say that you know his uh, uh, lifetime value of a customer is 1200 bucks. It might be higher than that. Um, however, his closing ratio is going to be a little bit closer or, or lower. Excuse me, his, his conversion. Um, it's a specific type of product, so it will be good, but it's not going to be 15%. Let's say that it's 10. Um, bam, here we go. And we run campaigns like this. We've got clients. I've got one right now. He sells a special type of ball cap, and he's got a 2,000 plus percent uh, ROAS. Uh, and this, by the way, is ROI. This is off the, the potential net of the product. So, um, you know, 170% month over month, not a big deal. But if you know your lifetime numbers, again, which is something that we always make sure we you know, bring to the forefront of the conversation. This is a very high performing campaign and exactly what you want to see out of Google ads. So I would say this is very viable. So you can see based off of estimates and projections that you begin to paint a picture as to what's going to work for you and what's not going to work for you. Again, if you want access to this, just go to soy.com forward slash estimates and uh, it's going to redirect you to this doc or at some point we might gate it, but it, it will remain free. You can have it because we're awesome. And um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. So if you have any questions, hit me in the comments. If you have any ideas, hit me in the comments. If you want to improve on this, um, if you don't like my hair, uh, if you have something to say, if you have something you want us to talk about, I'm trying actively to grow our subscriber base. We need a thousand subscribers to go live. And that's something I want to do. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I promise we're only going to create valuable content. My partner and I are trying to produce a video every single day. So hit that little bell and you'll get notified anytime we go live. Uh, give me a thumbs up just for my ego and uh, share this video with anybody that you think it would be relevant for. Feel free to share the estimates and projections document. This is ours. It's something that I created. Um, hopefully it's helpful to you. And uh, what did I forget? Like, comment, subscribe, share. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully I get to see you tomorrow. And uh, until then, I hope you're crushing it with business and with Google Ads. Bye.